welcome to Talking Bottom. This is the third episode. This week, it's Contest. My name's Paul. Hi, I'm Matt Brooks. Hello, I'm Ange Johnson. So, guys, Contest. First episode they shot um, Mm -hmm. as the pilot in 1989. Third one that went out in the first series. That's not well known either, is it? That's that's something we found out ourselves while researching this podcast. I'd always suspected it. Yeah? Yeah. Just through watching it, because you can tell. Sure. A, they look a bit younger. B, the set's a little bit more. Yes, yes. What are it, the differences? The piano's in the, in the, in the foreground, isn't it? Rather yes, than the behind. Fourth, it's on yeah. the fourth wall, essentially. Yes. It's, it's the, the front. Uh, the, the stairs go a different direction as well when he's out in the hallway talking about, come on, Richie, you're the tops. Let's have another cast at the LMT. That That's bit. right. And you so can the, actually the, see that I think the bathroom isn't downstairs. It looks like a cupboard with some paint. Right. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. The main difference, the thing that always stood out, it's amazing how different a couple of years can make when you're in your 30s in terms of aging. Um, well, yeah, AIDS got a bit of hair, hasn't it? Both their hair's got a different, bit of hair. but yeah, he's, he's a bit fuzzier. Richie yeah. has more sort of boyish curtains going on mm, than long, his usual yeah, kind of lion's mane. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of a setup for bottom, I think very, very good, very strong. Sets down a lot of the themes and things that they kind of go on with in other episodes. The opening shot, rain, it's a gloomy yeah. world. Richie's there at the window, Contemplating depressed. suicide. Contemplating suicide. <laughs> oh, what? doesn't How's that yeah. for an opener? It <laughs> starts with him putting his head into a fucking oven. Yeah. You don't know the context yet. That's a really dark... If that was the first ever thing you ever saw of this show... Christ, yeah, what, a, yeah. what a weird I, start. Okay, this guy is so depressed he's going to kill himself. But no, it's okay. He's not depressed. so depressed he's going to kill himself. He's just actually trying to con his friend into buying him a drink. Yeah, that's a weird motive, motive yeah, as well. He doesn't beautiful. drink that much, really, does he, Richie? No, it's a beautiful setup yeah. to their relationship, isn't it? Like, yeah. He's at home, yeah. he's been cooking up a little scheme. Sure. Um, and cooking um, up a little grill. And yeah, you can see the plates on top of the oven on the yeah, yeah, little uh, grill. Can't yeah, you? The, well, just, so that's keeping it warm or something. Is that what people used to do? Yeah, Leave it under the grill? Yeah, just yeah. leave it there. Well, but, he's been cooking it all day, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been sitting there getting gradually cremated all Fucking day. green bacon. But also the setup that obviously, A, they haven't got much money as well. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that it's all there in that first five minutes, isn't it? And, and he's the housewife, sort of, as well. Yeah. Eddie comes home uh, from what you think is probably some kind of respectable job Mm -hmm. until that gets turned on its head where after he tells about the trials and tribulations of his day moving around the various departments being moved from pillar to post he's actually been at the Dole office all day yeah Yeah. 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 trying to find work the setup for Richie and Eddie is that they are on the bread line or Mm -hmm. beneath it really Yeah. yeah and They've got to find a way of A, feeding themselves and B, entertaining themselves. This episode sets the precedent for them going on about ridiculously small amounts of money and quabbling over it. Mm. Well, I love that, you know, £11.80. That should be enough to last Last three months or something, they say, don't they? So that's, again, a comment on, you know, how awful the bureaucracy is uh, at the Dole office, isn't it? And that bitch, Mrs Pugh, has always been one of my favourites. You just know who she is without even having to see her, don't you? Let me just give a brief synopsis of the plot as given by iTunes. Eddie and Richie have an argument over whether or not to watch the Miss World contest on their TV. The argument is initiated by Eddie, who has spent most of the £11.80 they had to last them two months on a second-hand copy of Parade magazine. And there you have it. There is the entire That's a really short one. It's why it's my favourite, I think, yeah. of the first yeah. series. But A, it's the pilot, so they've, they've really thought about it, haven't they? Like the build-up who these characters are. And yeah, they're, they're very well-defined. Yeah. They're almost, each other. almost perfect. It, it's The only thing I think that's a little bit different is there's not much violence in this episode. Mm. Really? Yeah. Not as many sound effects. That's exactly it. Two things they would later on lean towards quite a lot, and that is the violence and the sound effects. Mm-hmm. So this one is more kind of dialogue heavy. It's yeah. more about the script and the writing. It's just the two of them. Yeah. yeah. So his, fl- his flights of fancy and his streams of consciousness is quite a few of Richie. <laughs> which I, which I think is probably related to the basis of Bottom, which is them doing a stage production of Waiting for Godot. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of see similarities I'm not going to pretend I'm a stop art expert but you can mm. kind of see similarities and parallels with that and this it's two guys on the arse end of society just sitting around waiting for something to sure, happen sure, sure. and nothing happens and life is just fucking rubbish yeah well, I mean Eddie's monologue is at the end isn't it really quite it's so bleak but yeah, just so yeah. true isn't it it's like people like us aren't meant to win things yeah. you know and it's again I keep drawing it back to Steptoe and Son but I think there's definite sort of correlations there as well just the idea of two yeah. guys who are just trying to eke out their existence on the little that they've been handed 
Jesus H. Corbett is mentioned in this episode. And Jesus H. Corbett, yeah. I can't ask Rick now, but I wish I had when yeah. I met him and said, no, it was the Jesus H. Corbett thing because it was a little nod towards Harry H. Corbett from Steptoe and Son. I'd I, put money on it. So this one, yeah, it kind of sets up a lot of the recurrent themes that we see throughout Bottom. A dirty, shitty, grimy world. A world of loneliness, ah. desperate for sex and women. And also a hatred of each other that Richie <laughs> sure, and Eddie sure. have, despite the fact that they're completely codependent on each other. Mm. Did you notice that this, uh, this being the pilot as well it's a bit messy but it's not as dirty flat there's not the grease isn't on the cabinet wall uh, right, doors right. and stuff yeah, there it's, dirt and it's, not, it's mess there's not dirt it's different it's not it's greasy the laundry that's hanging up there's some bright something. white mm. underpants and like right. that's not at what bottom would do now it would be tea stained colored that's yeah. now. true yeah they obviously hammed that up as they went along yeah yeah but they, there's definitely grime on the door and things but not as much it's definitely yeah. not as definitely much definitely not as much no. that first set that they created obviously they went to town when they yeah. came back to it yeah the china cutlery is very clean when richie cleans the plates <laughs> yeah mm. when, when he empties them out the uh, conservatory window yeah <laughs> sure that man. Oh, that little oi as well i never yeah, really noticed yeah, that yeah. oi yeah, yeah. yeah little one. <laughs> yeah it, if anything you imagine it, that if anything it, it's quite subtle isn't it yeah. it's like yeah. oi and that, I, would, would, would that be how you'd react if yeah. <laughs> well, it well, happened before? Oh, I... Yeah, you again. <laughs> but that's yeah. actually kind of harping back to the days of Victorian England, doesn't it? We yes, used to throw absolutely. throw stuff out your window. Absolutely. Is. In Scotland, they used to sort of holler out the window <laughs> so sure. they could throw their slot buckets out and yeah. not, not pour it onto someone <laughs> below. Like that, That's brilliant, that, just chucking stuff out yeah. the window. Well, on the subject of windows, uh, I'll just link here. One other difference I noticed was the kebab place is a burger place. Oh, you say that? That's uh, that's interesting. I, I didn't think it was a burger place. Oh, I thought it, it said says burger. I said burger. I thought it said burger restaurant. Oh, this, this is so oh, okay. good because this is gonna. This is. Uh, I've got a oh, question about a this quiz. later on. Oh, all right. Um, and I already know that <laughs> right. one, if not both of you, will not get this question right. What did you pause then earlier? You're gonna have to say. And what? What do you think? What the restaurant is? Yeah. It has a very specific word on the sign. All right. Okay. I wrote more than ten questions, okay, so I'll then. use this one here. The sign on the outside the restaurant. Yeah. Very clearly says the word tandoori. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was an Indian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was oh, a burger you... restaurant. Sorry, Andrew. I'm right afraid you, we've wasted that right, question. Well, I should now. start with one yeah. point. Well, I don't on. think. Uh, well, if you want to message in and think of Andrew to start with one <laughs> point, this episode is one of the two-hander episodes that I always associate bottom as a two-hander. But are you talking about when Richie's about to wank? Well, I don't think he'd use two hands. He'd win, no, he's, he's, two he's fingers. That's more a, up with both yeah, his hands. Fingers. That's, that's like, more that's... of a one finger, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <coughs> no, yeah, you of course mean out. that it is literally it's just just those two. Three. Yeah. Now, uh, if you're going to be very anal about it, uh, uh, this is one of only three two-handers because if you're going to be very anal about it, you wouldn't count the camping episode because of the flasher things like that. It was very arduous. Yep. But this is one of only three episodes that only the two of them appear in. Yeah, the other two are whole and culture, I believe. So it's one, yes, it's one per, one per season. season. Absolutely. And that, that's weird to me. It's the same thing as uh, Dick Ed only being in three episodes. So I, I just think there's, well, surely there's more. But, but I suppose burglary as well. There's, you know, the, the burglars and the police, they pop up. Yeah. It's, it's all about those two. So it always feels mm-hmm. more a two-hander. I think that's why I really, just for the comic banter between them, just two is always great, isn't it? You know, yeah. having to hand out the gags. But the magic happens between Rick yeah. and Aid, so I think that might be why they're probably my favourite episodes of yeah. each season. I think it it may series, be series, not in America. Yeah, it may be a necessity <laughs> of it being the pilot. So obviously, when people are when writers and performers get a pilot commission, there's usually not a lot of money thrown at it, so you have mm. to be quite creative. They presumably set themselves uh, the target of one location. It's two people. That's it. We can't go to the pub in this episode because we mm. don't have a series commission that will allow us to build the sets for it. Mm-hmm. We're not going to bring in loads mm. of other characters so it's just going to be the two of us so at that point you have just two guys no chicks and so at that that point it has to be a very strong script I mean being one location as well it's more or less one room that you see a little bit of the hallway it's essentially again like Waiting for Godot it's essentially a stage play Mm. yeah and that's how every bottom episode is written really isn't it yeah they are in the script book they're written like a play yeah that's how I thought you wrote TV things when I was little I didn't know Mm. there was a a formatting of uh, film and TV things were different Mm. Because this one is a bit more about the dialogue, this one feels a bit less manic and cartoonish than 
later episodes. So, you know, Richie hasn't quite reached his levels of mania in this. He does still have it. The phone call's pretty mania. He has his flights of fancy. Not mania, I know. Yeah, yeah. The phone call with the tring, 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 and also the, what am I going to, things like, what am I going to feed the children on now? Mm. As though they actually have, in his head, he actually believes they have children. There's that, but there's not the sort of levels of, you you know, like the kind of things that we associate with Rick, you know, that we get later on. Yeah, it's still finding it, I suppose, aren't they? Crazy Rick in I don't know. I mean, I would argue that all the sort of just don't hurt a kid, okay? Yeah, and yeah. All there's of a lot. That, there's like, a lot there, isn't there? There's a lot of, um, and you are getting the hint that he's insane. Yeah, yeah. You know that he's not right in the head. But is it because he spent all day on his own? Is is it and he and he says all these things out loud to himself, and that's because all day at home he's probably having to talk to he himself. He has just inhaled a bunch of that's, gas yeah. as well. Don't forget, yeah. <laughs> there is well, that. I mean, there is that line in there somewhere, which is, "I'm just a very lonely person." Yeah, that's him. so genuine, and then he's yeah. like, oh, "I'm not yeah. surprised." Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's but, so heartbreaking, yeah. isn't it? In yeah. many ways, but you are with Eddie. Yeah. Where it's like well, you, 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 you know, deserve it, mate. You, you deserve it. Yeah. Bollocks Rich, incessantly. Richie bears his soul there almost. <laughs> Eddie's first words to Richie, you know, when he walks in, yeah. and and Richie's trying to be yeah. oh, hello, polite Eddie. and friendly. What are, what are Eddie's first words? I'll oh, bugger off. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. He's had enough of him. I like the, they're coming over to kiss him alone. Yeah. The, it's just sitting down. He's had a shit day. Well, I like the non-verbal stuff that starts with like. First of all, Richie walks through everything that Eddie will do. He'll come through, coat, body odor, and everything he says mm. is what happens. So they, they do know each other. And then when Eddie sits down but doesn't notice Richie, mm. so he coughs a bit, and he just rolls his eyes and look yeah. at this shit again. Yeah. And so yeah, you that, shows, done it before, that you? shows how much they know each other. Rolls his eyes at this attention-seeking yeah. wanker. Yeah. Which yeah. is true, isn't it? Because you think like, oh, well, you don't know. He could be... No, he does know because yeah. I'm sure he's done this sort of thing before. And yeah. it literally is. It's attention-seeking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's and it's all just, idea just for of, a drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eddie yeah. buys me a drink, and and why would Eddie buy him a drink? Yeah, yeah. with so, what money? Yeah. So what? Another thing. Why do you have to turn on the gas to do it? Let's. Uh, <gasps> I better. I guess for realism. Yeah, because you know. uh, yeah, yeah. he doesn't think things through, does he? I think he needs. Is it, what also like? Is it? Atten- I mean, attention seeking. I mean, I'm not going to get heavy, but a suicide attempt is generally a cry for help. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to like make aspersions. I've never been that low in my life, and I hope I never would be. But it is. It is attention seeking in a way, isn't it? It's like getting Eddie's attention and him caring about him in some way, isn't it? Yeah. But you really analyse it. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Yeah. But, like, Richie's actually just trying to hoodwink him out of ATP for a coke. You know. Like, yeah. that's... There's something there. I think Richie is probably suicide. Suicidal. He wants sympathy, doesn't yeah. he? And he wants any kind weird. of human oh. like love, oh. doesn't he? Because then again, like further on in the episodes, well, we'll talk about it next week. But you know, when he's lying in bed, yeah, whatever happened to my mum? Yeah, you know, he's been abandoned in life, hasn't he? I've what? got to disagree about him. I don't think he's genuinely suicidal. Mm. I think the whole thing is because he can always look on the bright side. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a convoluted plot to get a drink. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think I don't think he genuinely wants to kill himself. Well, yeah, it's, there's you know he's really depressed, isn't he? I suppose he maybe thinks a bit too much of himself to kill himself. Well, it's it partly down to it. I mean, partly yeah. uh, his depression probably stems from his loneliness and his uh, his yeah. lack of success with the opposite sex. Yeah. Sure, but and that's like, it. Like you know, at the end of the episode where Eddie is like, "Do you want me to turn the gas on?" Yeah, yeah. Tap yeah. that is really harsh as that's well, horrid. isn't it? That's that's horrid. But yeah. even with that, Richie yeah. is like, oh, I know he's trying to cheer me up, you know. <laughs> and he's and, just shaking his head. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's no, really, I mean, really I mean dark of Eddie, yeah. isn't it? In that, that, that tops and tails the episode with a dark opening where you think someone's mm-hmm. going to commit suicide, with a dark ending where his best friend in the whole wide world actually says to him, Why don't you top yourself? Go For on. A bit of entertainment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, That'll bit, last like it? five, ten minutes. Because yeah. the telly's broken, yeah. yeah. Yeah, me. It, I mean, that's an insight into Eddie's mind, though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, like, and how much he does probably really mm. hate Richie. A, a reason why Richie is always so at odds with himself. He denies his baser instincts a lot, but also is a slave to them. If you know, like mm-hmm. with all these, you know, he, he does hate himself. His uh, perversions often take a form of something that could be interpreted as different, like he's masturbating to the art magazine and right. stuff and he in the same episode turns his nose up at Eddie buying a copy of Parades like so it's a jazz mag like so he's so dismissive it's disgusting but only after he's it. tried to take it off him and Eddie said yeah, no yeah that's right yeah. That's so right. then he's going to take the other position hasn't yeah. he he's Out- going to take the higher ground outwardly part of his conservative attempting to be upwardly mobile in society persona mm-hmm. he would look down upon pornography whereas actually he would avidly consume it yeah mm-hmm. and Eddie yeah, knows that full yeah. well yeah. and that's what's wonderful 
people, isn't it? The idea that he's not sitting at home suicidal, yeah. actually sitting at home having a wank. Yeah. <laughs> how dare you accuse Several me of masturbating? Times a day, isn't it? How dare you? Home. It's so embarrassing. Like, oh my god, that I'm right. outraged. I'm absolutely outraged. You've the, accused me of this. The level he jumps to with his anger in yeah. that, you know, to go from Eddie's very sort of uh, very subtle, um, oh, uh, while yeah, you're yeah. alone in the house, to uh, like almost yelling, <laughs> how yeah. dare you accuse me of masturbating? Is brilliant. But just that jump. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic because it, like Eddie's reaction as well. It's like, have you said anything about this? Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you knew what you were saying, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, that's the picture I always look at. And how does he know it's the picture he always looks at? And Richie says it's not porny at all, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then obviously Eddie chips in that the it, blue ribbon well is dirty. You know? oh, no, I just found this in your study yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, in your study area. So it's just a one, bookcase, isn't it? Is it? Just I guess book. one bit of this bookcase yeah. is your study area. It's lovely because that, again, is sort of aspirations to some sort of middle class or even mm-hmm. upper class kind of having a life or whatever in your house. We mentioned this the first episode where Eddie's got the Airfix models that he's doing mm. like, and he crush I didn't notice before he crushes it out of anger. There's, there's two things that are sort of fairly middle class that he does when he comes in. The first thing he does when he comes in after his long day at what seems to be work is sits down and just wants to do the crossword. And does then it? after that, once he has his little uh, anger outburst at Richie, sits down, starts to do his Airfix models. This uh, <laughs> this episode has a quote from Richie that sums up their relationship perfectly. You may hate me, Eddie. Yes, I do. He mm. says, but you can't live without me. That's those two people, codependent mm-hmm. relationship, like a lot of the other classic sitcoms where people are forced together or they live together, but they really shouldn't be together, like Steptoe and Son, Red Dwarf, Porridge, Only Fools and Horses, that kind of thing. It is their relationship, isn't it? Richie is the wife at home, cooking mm-hmm. and attempting to clean. And you're right, when he sums it up like that, you can't live without me. You know, when he throws him out in this episode and Eddie comes back within a minute, or something it's yeah. out of that on Nasty Linda and that proves it doesn't it because he's living there rent free essentially isn't yeah. he he's, he is a taking fullest advantage sure. but it's because they need each other really yeah. because, so this you know. is the first mention of his aunt first mention of his aunt who later on apparently owns the uh, flat mm. well, she, it's not your flat it's, it's your auntie's not. so she owns it in this one alright oh, yeah. sorry and you know what I'm thinking of in this one she owns it mm. later on she owns it as well and then down the line, Mr. Harrison comes around looking yeah, for rent. rent. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. There's there's a few inconsistencies. They obviously that. change their minds. Well, on that. Yeah. 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 I think in this episode, the setup is that Richie owns the house by yeah. default because yeah. Anne mm-hmm. has sort of let him live there. Yeah. Whether she's actually given him it. I don't think so. I think it's just, oh, my nephew's a bit weird. And so he may as well. I just, would have loved to see that put, character. Let's put Richie in the flat and he'll yeah. be fine there and we won't have to see him. Yeah. We, we, um, hear, we <laughs> hear more about her next episode. We'll talk about her then, I guess. Mm, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I would have loved to see their at relationship. At that point, all we know is, well, this is Auntie Olga in yeah. Apocalypse, but this is Mabel. Yes, it is. Oh, too. yes, okay. Yeah. Isn't there? So there's, yeah. it's Mabel in Contest. They can't both own the flat. So, maybe they, maybe they're no, a lesbian no, so couple. I think Auntie Olga's coming round to the flat in Apocalypse. We'll talk about it next week. But Auntie Olga's coming round to visit, isn't Aunt, she? Auntie Olga mm-hmm. is the one who dies. Yes. Yeah. Spoilers. That's who's meant to be coming. Yeah. But in this, it's literally just Mabel is who yeah. owns the flat. So there's You're two right. aunties. You're right. It's just yeah, it's there in the script for <laughs> anyone who wants to find it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this one went out in third place, but it was the first one they shot because it was the pilot. Mm. And when we see them, they're already living together and they have been together for a while. How do you guys picture them meeting originally? How do you, how do you guys see them originally winding up living together? Well, Richie oh, and Eddie. Yeah. yeah, where would they have met? They, uh... They're they not school friends. No. And I no. doubt they in any way went to any higher education. So, yeah. so it's down either the pub? at the pub or the doll office, perhaps. Yeah. I see. I I would imagine when they met, Richie was in London alone, desperate, lonely. Eddie was looking for On someone. On the bus. Pr- well, hey, even yeah. right, so... could start a conversation with anyone, couldn't he? If he's out. Yeah, well. yeah he does. Ed- <laughs> Eddie may be drunk, looking for someone just to buy him his next drink. Well, think about they've been the friends. Door drunk one night. But they've been friends for twenty five years. They say yeah. in this episode, right? Yeah. Maybe. There is something... No, no, that's the birthday episode. There birthday, has been something okay. I've been meaning to say to you for the last one. All right, years. fine. So so they're in their, tw- their 30s now. Let's say they're 35. They'd have been 10. Maybe we don't have to hold too much accuracy to the 25-year yeah. uh, thing. Yeah, maybe that's like actually just a hyperbole on their part, you know. But it, actually, maybe they are school chums. Maybe. There's a lot Primary of people school. you meet just yeah. from... Like your friends because your yeah. neighbours or your and let's face it, some of your parents friends, friends from primary school days and upwards. Like sorry to everyone that I still know, but you kind of are still lumped together because of your shared experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not necessarily that you've got you're very things different in people. common and yeah. you really, really, you know, would have made friends if you were older. It's that you were actually sharing education. Yeah. So maybe they actually were at school together, but it's never mentioned, is it? They've left it open. Right. I mm-hmm. think if they went to school together, then Eddie would have 
mercilessly bullied Richie every day. <laughs> but just simply that interaction would have made Eddie Richie's best friend because no one else would have Give spent any attention. time with him. Oh, yeah. that's sad. Mm, oh, that's, that's really tragic. And yeah, Eddie would have had a, probably a group of friends, maybe Spud Gun and Dave Hedgehog still as well. Who knows? And on the last no, day... No, he wouldn't have met him before. Richie had met him before, Eddie. Mm. On the last day before they left school, Eddie was probably planning on killing Richie finally <laughs> and dumping his body on some waste ground. And that's when Richie goes to him, oh, by the way, my auntie's uh, letting me live in a flat rent free. Do you want to come and stay in it? Yeah. At that For point, a week or so. Yeah, yeah. At that point, Eddie goes, oh, yeah. all right. Dun, dun. <laughs> Musical sting to take us yeah. to the next scene. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, they themselves met at university, didn't they? They Man, did. They they, and then they do yeah. say that their characters are loosely based on their own relationship. So yeah. maybe if you actually ever asked Aid, I don't know if they've ever said, yeah. um, been asked such a pertinent question, how did Richie <laughs> and Eddie first meet? Yeah. And actually, maybe I'll change my mind and it would be some sort of education. But definitely think? not higher education. Just for, yeah, Richie well, neither of them have done it, have they? Well, I don't know. I mean, Richie's got a study area. Richie would have... Bl- Richie, Richie, yeah, school of life. Richie, might have flunked out, mightn't he? Richie would have gone, gone to art college through clearing. Eddie would have burst into the <laughs> building thinking it was a pub, drunk, mm. and, and a beautiful friendship was born. Yeah, just met a load of students in the pub. Yeah. yeah. It was, you know, the theory that they're the young ones grown up. Uh, no, they're not, are they? So because he says you can't, you haven't held down a steady job since nineteen. And that was, and that was only for ten minutes. So didn't hold it down. Yeah. <laughs> bunny girl, <laughs> bunny. It's like oh, good hilarious, god, hilarious, hilarious imagery there. But the, so nineteen seventy eight from where they are at the end of the eighties, like that's okay. that is a long yeah. time, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Like, Do you see any links or callbacks to the young ones in this? There's one thing that happens in this episode that I th- makes me think of the young yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which Kicking is, the TV. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because Vivian does the exact same thing. Oh sure. no, sorry. Because Rick, Rick does Rick the exact does same the thing episode, in it? the young ones. Yeah, that's true. But anything else that kind of, you know... I guess the cooker made me think of the young ones a bit. The one that explodes. Mm. Is it not as greasy and stuff? And I don't the know. Set, the setup is quite similar to the kitchen in the young yeah. ones. And the both age have, both changes have how he plays Eddie. <laughs> huh? A bit more. I think age changes how he plays Eddie. Yeah. More so than Rick changes how he plays Richie. For this from episode, that yeah. episode yeah, to yeah. the next. Because when you then look at Smells yeah. and Eddie's sort of stumbling around drunk it, and he's a bit more kind of... Yeah, he's much more so the straight man in this episode, is he? isn't he? As time goes on, Eddie does what Homer Simpson does, which is he gets dumber mm. to make him funnier. Yeah. Mm. And Richie gets more manic and perverse mm. to make him funnier as well. Yeah. yeah. They become less like normal people and more like kind of cartoonish caricatures. Mm, not in a bad way. There's a few Vivian kind of looks as well, I think, as well, sort of towards Richie. I yeah. suppose, <laughs> yeah, that's just... <laughs> but that's just AIDS Their faces, faces isn't, it? isn't it? Like uh, Alan Partridge, uh, Steve Coogan's always saying, people will say, oh, you a lot of Partridge in that. It's like, no, there's a lot of me in Partridge. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just, yeah. As well as Eddie's thing about you're born, you keep your head down and you die, mm. there's another thing that's very kind of bottom-esque about this, which is Richie's... Do you know how many women there are in the world? Yeah, three billion. How many of them have slept with me? None. Mm-hmm. That's mm. kind of his ethos, isn't it? There's all these birds and none of them want to sleep with me. Yeah, and it's all poor me. Yeah. But... So, isn't that surprising? No. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, not. and what I've always loved, and I think no one in the audience really picks it up, is that like blind, deaf masochist, really. Yeah, And no one horrible. seems to pick it up, but yeah. Richie's... Yes, there's you right. Like I Bl- just, I love what that. What the f- blind <laughs> and deaf? That's enough. Masochist. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Like maybe she blinded and deafened herself from masochism. Mas- well, you'd have to. Fucking hell! Try and say that. To go out with Richie. That's what you'd need. Now, I suppose so. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that point because I was looking through the script book for this episode last night, and there's a chunk of uh, dialogue that. If they recorded it, then it never made it onto any of the outtakes or bloopers or anything like oh, that. Do that, tell. That precedes this. I wondered if, Matt, you wanted to read it with me. Okay, sure. Yeah? Who am I? You're Eddie, obviously. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this goes from... Do you know how many of those women I've slept with? Yes, uh, that's statistically quite phenomenal. And then we go into a different section that mm. comes out at the end with the blind deaf masochist. Right, I'm not going to do the impression. No, okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, statistically, that's really quite phenomenal, isn't it? Not for a fat, ugly bastard like you. That's what I'm missing from life. What, a quick nasty? No, Eddie, love. The love of a good woman. An English rose. A Scottish heather. A Welsh dragon. A German sausage. Yeah, an Irish wolfhound. (laughs) A Chinese takeaway. A Spanish omelette. Any of those would do for me, except the Irish wolfhound, obviously. (laughs) But, all right, with a German sausage, then. All right, Eddie, let's skim over the details. It's only a metaphor. Give him an inch and he makes a porn movie. Shh. Why haven't I got a girlfriend? I wish I had a girlfriend. It'd be someone to listen to me. All I've got is you, Eddie. Careful. I wonder what sort of great bird would suit me. Blind one. Deaf, blind, masochist. 
Really? Yeah, I suppose yeah. you're right. I mean, and then we're going yeah. back into the thing. That's weird. That is. Ooh. That's a whole chunk. I can kind of and see. And that's quite similar to the Foxy Stoat. It is exactly it? very similar. But the English rose and the, that's brilliant, isn't it? The <laughs> Welsh track. <Yeah. laughs> but you can see why they either had to chop yeah, it out because sure. it was just getting a bit too long, I guess, or, yeah. or they just thought it wasn't actually that funny. Yeah. They actually yeah. came to the read through or something. Yeah. yeah. But interesting that it's there in the, in yeah. the screen. Yeah. So it must have been it very late. That, or maybe they chopped it after filming it. I think it's time for a moment from our sponsor. <laughs> We save you money. Oh, look, the Amstrad Rock Hi Fi. That'll save a few notes. <laughs> and you'll save on this Philips 22 inch. Get the picture. Oh, the sharp video. I could watch that one over and over. We, we save, save you money, money and serve you right at Umbelows. element we've mentioned there's not as much violence obviously in contest yeah. mm-hmm. there are still elements of it and obviously richie falling out the window towards the end that's very cartoon yeah isn't it? You well, know. played a bit more straight isn't it yeah but it... i i actually do you think the eating of the dinner it's almost roll doll isn't it in yeah terms of it's grotesque <laughs> when you see it of you first food. see it it's it you can't identify the matter that's on that plate no. and yeah. what he, he says Oh, this has been grown, found, or foraged. What's he been doing? It's a plate of car- <laughs> Going through bins, you yeah. imagine. It's, it's like he's, he's preceded the, the Wombles kind of mentality of just recycling. It's growing freegans, isn't it, that do that? Yeah, it's Freegan. entirely a plate of carbonised matter. The only thing you can actually make out is the green thing, which you think is lettuce, but yeah. you're told is bacon. <laughs> yeah. so and it's like, great how Rich is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the least weird thing here. Beans have been growing on the windowsill and then they've got green flow. Like, what yeah. be- what? Yeah. What have you been growing beans for? Do you think that was a little bit of a nod or, or piss take out of the likes of the good life as well? The mm. idea that like you know, the uh, the aspiration of like having your own I suppose so, right? yeah. yeah. I guess so. Greens, that's a class thing, isn't it? But actually yeah. you're in a flat in London, the best yeah. you're gonna manage sure. is something yeah. on the window so. Where the fuck in Hammersmith are you gonna forage yeah. <laughs> some edible food? I've just been down to the alleyway where the dogs live. Yeah. Yeah. Forage. Yeah, and I also again Stolen. Like, the language used, like turnip. Yeah. Like it's not yeah. a carrot, it's not a mushroom even, is it? Yeah. It's a turnip. The crunch, what are you missing yeah. the label? The crunch isn't quite the same sort of sound effects you'd hear in other episodes, are they? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. It's quite a natural. It's quite a natural. Yeah, yeah. But still, it's still there. Later on, they really went to town with the sound effects going over the top, didn't they? For me, that whole sequence with the food is topped by Rick doing the biggest gob on the food yeah. that you just see dangling out of his mouth. It's horrid, isn't it? Also, I love how the fact that him gobbing on the plate is the punchline to him going, hey, come on, come on, yeah. my yeah. friend, come and sit down, I've made I, you this I'm food. I'm the better guy, yeah. I'm the better guy, yeah. That is just so perfect, isn't it, in a friendship, isn't it? It's yeah. like, you haven't really got over the argument that's just happened, actually. Mm. You can still try and score a point. And then it's great you see him just, like, taking the spittle off the green beans <laughs> yeah. or whatever Ugh. it is. It's yeah. just... His first question as he sits down... What's wrong with the beans? <laughs> What's <laughs> wrong with these beans? <laughs> What's wrong with this? Yeah, and that again, like the wife that's like spent all day cooking. Yeah, and, but yeah, but um, when it's like it's that that rank, and like I do like R- Richie speaking with his mouth full of oh fresh vegetables, <laughs> it's just like oh it's hate <laughs> And then I always very much didn't know who Egon Rone was. Egon when Rone I was younger. I know now. Yeah, but go on, Paul. Who is he? Oh, well, he is a world-renowned chef. Yes. Which I was kind of able to gauge that from the reference in the script, but I didn't know who specifically mm. he was. I'll tell you who I did have to look up, Lena Zavaroni. Mm, yes. And that was yeah, kind yeah. of a joke Didn't about eating one. disorders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's, that's, that's not PC quote? nowadays, is it? It's like living with Lena Zavaroni. I see. So it? It, what was she a model or something that? Oh, uh, that... I read. Oh, I can't remember. I think I think she was a gymnast or something, or she might have been an actress. <laughs> it sounds uh, like a gymnast. And had a yeah. eating disorder. Um, oh, and had a severe eating disorder, which affected her quite a lot. Um, well, she wouldn't have mm. eaten anything. <laughs> 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 you know, <Yeah. laughs> let's just say she was picky about what okay, she ate. I see. Yeah. Yes, that must be what it was. They mm. weren't being nasty about now, anorexia. Now, um, pass the tea. <laughs> Who has <laughs> hot tea with dinner? <laughs> for, for one, it might be cold. Well, yeah. But it's okay, but it's not. Yeah. The kettle's still hot. Yeah. Right, yeah. Elm, he has had to boil the kettle. Elm tea. 
How now, much did you quote that when you were younger? Yeah, oh, so I don't much. know what Elm Tea is still to this day. Oh, it's I don't think it is anything, is it? Maybe I, I don't know, I, but it just you know from context that I don't know how to make Elm Tea. But Richie's fucked it up. I'm That's pretty, obviously not no bark. It's, it's that he's got some yeah. bark off an elm, an elm tree, tree and yeah. boiled it up with some water. I'm pretty sure that Elm Tea does exist in some variety, but yes, Richie probably thought I'll just go and hack some bark off yeah, an actual elm tree. Yeah, yeah. 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 but you can just see him down the park or yeah. wherever. Got you just <laughs> <like> <laughs> some what do you think the pud was when he says there's plenty, plenty of pud. pud right i'm off he oh knows. fuck knows uh, and that's when the plot kicks in really where eddie's like right well at least mm. there's something fantastic on tv and he just uh, leaves the room and you oh, yes. see richie yeah, he says just, i've been looking forward yeah. to this yeah. for ages and slowly, richie's got yeah. it hasn't he then it's like right. right it's still like what what was happening and just because he's lost control of the situation like he needs to be center of attention always yeah. mm. nothing was nothing's really changed he's still eating dinner he's still, well eddie's but, refused dinner though so. i suppose so, That's but annoyed he has lost control of the situation, so he's now he gets his childish, petty yeah. side on. Where we're like, well, no, you can't watch this. Why? <laughs> he's, he's a terrible liar. Bless he? <laughs> My favourite program on the other side. <laughs> yeah, saying it's his favourite program yeah. and then doesn't know what the hell it is he's put on. So and yeah, cuts his nose off to spite his face because it turns exactly. out it's something he would have enjoyed to see. Richie totally commits himself so much to his petty, vindictive nature that even when he finds out that there's something that he really would want to watch, yeah. he has to double down and stick with it and insist we're not watching this. His pettiness and childishness culminates in the thing that we all must have said at some point to our friends when they pissed us off, which is, right, that's it, get out of my house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a childish thing as well. Predating that, if, if you've got siblings fighting over the TV and which yeah. channel it's going to be on, and the fact they've got to get up yeah, physically switch, fight yeah. each other for the switch, switch of the channel TV like the kids yeah. today they've got no idea what that is did you <laughs> notice uh, on, on the TV as well there's a little pile of cigarettes or, uh, or on the TV as well it's like one of the precursors of their filthy filthy flat and stuff and, like and that and the hide the fags oh yeah yeah it does say hide the fags because I've always Franny, wondered like, yeah. what fags yeah. <laughs> are, they, are what? they smokers well, you well they must be oh, smoke, no. uh, you, you but... see Richie smoke at one point it's during the chess uh, episode oh, oh yeah. from, yeah. from, from a bit of to, does he? and he does he breathes through his nose doesn't yeah. he and then violently coughs yeah. <laughs> yeah but they obviously have fags in the house maybe like sure, sure. for when people come around or maybe Eddie smokes and we just don't see it yeah. why would they write that in yeah. and then the only thing Richie can threaten Get out of my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and then the only like, thing he's so got over it is. I won't repeat that. And then he's like, "Well, I can't do anything about it." And the look on Richie's face where he's realised he's trapped yeah. in this <laughs> weird childish. Yeah. Uh, argument. You're snookered and checkmated yeah. there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so Richie kicks Eddie out, and once he's out, we then go on to one of Rick Mel's best bits of physical comedy because he's so subtle with it. He turns the channel back over to Miss World. And then it's the way his hands just edge, yeah. edge towards his crotch. Oh, what, well, when he's about to have a wank? Yeah. Well, just yeah. before he decides that he's going to drop his trousers. Sure. Yeah, kind of yeah. Like just, just, oh, could I, should I? That whole yeah. sequence, it starts off subtle. By the time Eddie comes yeah. back in and he's got his trousers down, he's doing wrist exercises, blowing on his hand. <laughs> yeah. oh, also, lo- looks like he's left-handed because he's really favouring his left hand there. Yeah, Rick is. Look. Like, doing wrist exercises, blowing on it to warm it up, as though, like, oh, well, uh, if my hand's going to be cold, I don't want it touching my knob, so yeah. I better... <sighs> <gasps> Heated yeah. up a few times. Also, did you notice he goes to turn the channel over again back to the, his fake mm. favorite channel? So like he's he's believing his own lie. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, at that point. So, but then he was like, oh, actually no, now I can watch this. Oh yeah, reality mm. sinking in. Yes, I, I now can. Uh, masturbate over this world <laughs> he does tend to believe his own lies doesn't he like yeah wh- wh- he does whether he's the rain dancing the, what, stuff. whether he's on the phone to what he thinks of the kidnappers yeah. who have Janie who want all that money oh that bit that's a standout that is the yeah. standout part of this episode I, I really love AIDS reaction slowly in the background because <laughs> he's got his hands over his ears he's just like I'm just ignoring you just ignoring you he does manage to ingratiate his way back onto the sofa doesn't he between this happening as well Richie's tidied up the suicide note that he's left setting it up for later yes yeah. you notice it yeah. and then i don't know if we've got a bit muddled as to where it comes then but obviously the phone conversation with lieutenant sex machine yeah. 14 million billion squillion zillion dollars what like, are you uh, like, yeah, what are you crazy oh you are so, so there's a there's a <laughs> realism within his own fantasy so that's quite a deep level of crazy there yeah. richie when but, you think of how they're just weaving through to basically richie then earlier when he could have 
figured out that sum in his head, couldn't he? Yeah. His level of vindictiveness as he comes over and st- he's doing the yeah. sums, doing Pointing. the maths, yeah. and then ends with it, his bitterness, the way he spits, you grasping little fagin. Oh. Yeah, and putting can, in his face. Can I and, say yeah. as well, I never really understood when I was younger how horribly racist the character of Fagin is in, in Oliver. Right, yeah. I just, I didn't uh, understand that he... He's, yeah. But So interesting that you mention racism, because that brings me onto one thing that I wanted to mention on this. Miss China. Right, oh, so Bottom, okay. generally, for me, never goes down the road of anything that is contentious mm. in terms of race or anything like that. But for this one, when Miss China talks and the audience laughs, all they're laughing at it's is the how she's speaking. It's strong accent, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, is, that is only the one thing that kind of niggles at a me. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. It's oh, a very but... cheap blow. Oh, bloody yeah. hell. Gag. So, but l- if you've ever watched Miss World, I think you could argue... It's just sort of high. It, again, it's the cartoon idea of like, what would Miss China sound like? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a cartoon Chinese voice, isn't I, it? That, and a lot of cartoons yeah. used to get away with that sort of stuff. Way yeah, back when. that's for some so, reason they they were the last uh, race that you could kind of be racist towards yeah. for a while. And if you're gonna do an impression of an accent, yeah, like, you know, but it, yeah. yeah, it it doesn't really sit quite right, does it? But no, it is quite. I funny tell you, when you what, first watch it. I tell you what, I was in hysterics last night watching that bit. I don't know why it tickled me a bit so much. The bet is just brought up. I put a, I put a bet on this world, and it's as soon as the bet is announced, it's not even real. Yeah. It's like a curse has been put onto Miss China <laughs> instantly. Which one's ours, Miss China? Oh, Bosh falls over, and you hear oh you hear an audible oh from the crowd, and then it's like oh god, you she's spitting out teeth. And, and has a face you, covered in blood. In blood. Yeah. Can you imagine? That would be the worst day of that poor woman's <laughs> life. Like, I got Miss China. This is the height of my friends. And f- oh, no. And then the, <laughs> she'd be going through therapy for this. With my one chance squandered by that fucking, that fucking fool. And you hear the announcer really, uh, like off screen, like really low. Uh, saying, Lord, I've a nasty fool there. Hopefully the judges will take that into account. <laughs> Fantastic! It's like spit them out, dear. I'll never know yeah. again. Teeth out. It's like fucking hell. Right. Well, let's. Sorry, everyone. We're gonna go to a commercial break there because obviously one of the <laughs> contestants is horribly it's, injured. It is almost as if they are watching a horse, though, isn't it? Like they're backing a horse. Well, it's the same way, same like, thing, isn't it? Which one's say, ours? Like, how are they like judging women here? Like the you know, <laughs> the thing from the swamp. Yeah. Like they'll literally put any label onto her, but it it is hilarious. And then the fact that it's just a tenor as well. But what? then it's a thousand Eddie's to made, one, wasn't Eddie's it? made up the odds, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, but I wonder if they're genuine odds for Miss China. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe. Okay, do we think that Miss China was... Okay, yeah. Was oh. just an outsider enough? Uh, uh, I guess he thought, well, well that one, she won't win, so therefore I won't be called out. But then he believes his own lie, doesn't he? Because you see the look of... Of excitement, so, oh, we're in for a chance, we're in for a chance, and yeah, he like, cheers, goes to life. cheer well, when it's not Miss China, and then smashes the team out of that's fury. A, that's a good yeah. point. He he knows yeah. it's a lie yeah. because he spent the money on a slap up grill, mm-hmm. but he he's so annoyed that she didn't win that he kicks the television in. Sure, yeah, and yeah. in a similar way to Richie, but absolutely, yeah. Lies, yeah. Like, it's got a, it's got to be wholly believable for them, hasn't mm. it, in order to convince us and each other, I suppose. So but I also love you know Eddie's idea of what paradise would be. Oh yeah, <laughs> but what's it lying yeah. on a beach in the Caribbean? When your when We've, your waiter yeah. serves you a tequila sunrise. No, no, oh no! no. Busfuls of dusky young yeah. maidens yeah. fulfilling every sordid whim. Sordid like for ten whim. grand, what are you? What, <laughs> where are you going when you got busfuls of women and a slap up grill for two? Yeah, yeah. that's his idea. The slap up grill mentioned. Uh, yeah, in this episode of the first time. It's a, I think they mentioned it a couple of other times. What, slap up, no, no, slap up grill as a bit of a catchphrase. I think it's crap. Well, I mean, he, he then ends it by saying, I, I had a slap up grill, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like, it's another episode. Do, Rune, get a slap up grill down the Savoy. Is slap up ever applicable to any other meal apart from a grill? No, same yeah. thing as cheeky Nando's. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a slap up dinner, can't you? Slap up grill, so. slap up dinner, slap, slap up, up breakfast. breakfast. Oh, slap up breakfast, I, I think I've heard, like a full English, slap and up breakfast. Actually, sorry, silly question. What the fuck does slap up mean? I think that well, means piled on top of each other. Oh, I th- I w- okay. I thought like at the end of the meal you go, God, that was a good meal. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, I thought what, like, like, how it's presented to you. Just mm. thrown on the plate or like slapped down, slap it down. <laughs> So when Richie's going off on his his monologues and his flights of fancy and stuff, one thing I noticed when he goes on about that, oh, I think I was born in the wrong time. You know, I'm uh, Elizabethan or Shakespearean. Yeah. 
I think that's true. Actually, I do. You can see Richie in these sort of other other worldly things. He's definitely a man that doesn't fit in, mm. and I do think he, yeah, he is kind of out of time. I could, do you know I could what I mean? see him being a tremendous coward in the First World War, getting <laughs> shot by his own <laughs> so. generals for uh, for running away from the front line. Oh, and he'd be yes, yeah, so the class thing is something that's faded away from British culture, or it's more more in the background now. But it was so prominent uh, back in the in the in the olden times. So in many yeah, ways, Richie it. probably would have been. The idiot son that got sent off to the priesthood, wouldn't he? If he hadn't been so pervy. <laughs> Suppose yeah. so. Um, because he couldn't chat up girls. Like that's his thing, isn't it? He's well, not yeah, suited for yeah, this he, this he, life he, of going down the pub chatting up girls. He, he can't. He wants to desperately fit in, but he he just can't do so it. It's funny you sort of mention him in the context of putting him in other points in history, because that makes me think of. Rick Mail playing another character who pops up at other points in history, which is Flash Art, mm-hmm. which then makes me realise how good an actor Rick Mail is that you, he can go from one end of the extreme to the other, mm. play such a pathetic character mm, as Richie and be so yeah. utterly believable, and then you put him in the uh, uniform and the lariat of Flash Art, mm. and he's suddenly this Believe absolute it. monstrous sex god. Mm. It's kind of a testament to his acting capabilities. It's a thing as well, you know, just what other characters say around, like he's referred to as ugly. You know, he's not ugly by any stretch, really. I mean, he pulls ugly faces but you don't look at him like, oh look at that horrible ugly man he's also no, that's a... what's great about Rick yeah. that he can yeah. turn himself into this grotesque sort of hilarious it's yeah. for comedy purposes isn't it but he is like, well I would say for quite a lot of the female viewers like Rick is very attractive oh yeah. Ruby Wax uh, says something about this mm. which is like oh he always plays characters much more ugly than he is and mm-hmm. always has to go out of his way to make yeah. himself ugly like yeah. buying that's zits what, and stuff for, that's for what Rick comedy and comedy is isn't yeah. it? it's being able to send yourself up and not be arrogant or yeah. have yeah. to you know appear to be the most beautiful person on screen because that's not what is funny yeah, yeah. so that's what they're prepared to do and I'd say Aid is a very good looking guy as well like yeah. certainly like he dressed up as Vivian didn't he He's transformed into this yeah. mm-hmm. thing, but oh, yeah. actually when you see Aid just as he is like it's actually quite an un- unassuming kind of guy isn't he like what he's He's not in any way ugly. Neither of them are. To me, Aid always looks weird when I see him with hair. Any kind of hair mm. on his head. It's like seeing Bruce Willis now with any kind of hair. You think, ah, it doesn't look right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see the Kevin Turvey. Oh, I did. The man behind the green door. Yes. That's one of my favourite things ever. And yeah, Aid's got like really nice blonde hair back yeah, there. Yeah. Well, he had hair in the book How to Be a Complete Bastard as well. It's a little bit yeah. Vivian-esque, mm. but blonde. And yeah. it's just, he's playing Aid. You know, yeah. a, a kind of violent character that's the same thing. Rick's got no involvement in that at all. That's what the thing, they grew up on screen, didn't they, in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. Rick sort of got rose to fame in his very early 20s, didn't yeah. they? I mean, that's, mm. they're just, they've grown up in front of our eyes and aged. I think they aged fairly well. Adrian Emerson looks like Eddie full-time now, <laughs> doesn't he? Because he's, yeah, he does wear thick glasses and he's completely bald now. So for you guys, what are the, uh, are the standout moments of contest? Definitely drink, uh, drink, drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would agree. Entirely, that entire little monologue yeah. to himself is the, just superb. Like, yeah. like, who's Jamie? Who's got her? Yeah, <laughs> I'm the, great on the phone. All of the so oh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, him looking at the phone and then like, oh, I mean, I had a phone call in ages. I'm great on the phone. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 no one's what? wrong as in ages, isn't that yeah, sad in its own about? way as oh, well? In yeah. fact, in fact, his line is, we haven't had a phone conversation all, all night. night. All night! Yeah. Not all week, all yeah. night. So yeah, stand out moment, most definitely that monologue. Yeah. Anything else? For me, there's a couple of physical bits. It is a very good dialogue episode, but mm. physical bit, the dangling of the spit from Rick Mel's mouth mm-hmm. as it's about to land on the plate <laughs> that he's then planning on giving to his best friend is brilliant and you can hear the ah oh, from the audience as, he's, as yeah. he's doing it as well yeah, yeah. but also the bit that leads up to Richie's line of how dare you accuse me of masturbating which is so brilliantly spat out but the way Eddie plops the page open continually yes. oh look oh this just happens to have fallen over like this <laughs> I'll just you know what it works over here let me just bring it right in front of camera in front of Richie and whoom and go. it happens and again and the way Rick reacts and they dip <laughs> together as well isn't that yeah. wonderful physical and he's oh I've been caught uh, well I, I better <laughs> Uh, another bit, I guess a stand-up moment, is when he's fallen out the window yeah. and then he comes back. I like all the... He's, like, covered in mud and mm. dirt. It's a weird effect. It's like yeah. he's landed effect. in a skit outside, yeah. thing, isn't it? It's something that's an unusual choice. Instead of, like, I think we'd just have him a bit cut up and torn. But, yeah, yeah. like, it's all dirt on him. It, that's weird, and he, I like it. It right, it gives the appearance that rather than just, like, a straight cut that you, that you kind of looks a bit cartoonish, he looks like he's really grazed all mm. of his face. Yeah, he's mm. scraped down yeah. the side <laughs> yeah. of the wall as and, he's fallen. And the way he's kind of holding his arm... It looks like he's really suffered a lot of yeah. pain. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, holding himself and everything in, kind of yeah. pops in like Quasimodo. Yeah. It's yeah. like one shoulder. Sure. Well, so Eddie <laughs> does show a, a little bit of genuine upset, I think, when he's like, oh, 
Oh no! Well, because then he finds a suicide note, yeah. and it's well, it's, it's momentary. Oh, well, my it, standout but, moment would actually just be the suicide note. Yeah, like yeah. what Rick. But what I, Rick I would forgive it, you, like, but I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> if I was alive, I would forgive you, but I'm not, so I can't. So yeah. you just have to live with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. That is just super. Imagine that actually being the suicide yeah. Yeah. note that you left behind for your best mate. But, I, I love how Eddie then goes through very quickly, goes through a moment of sadness, and then into, well, I'm going to start selling Richie's possessions. Yeah, sort of <laughs> and then what's he said? I can get a few quid for this. Yeah, I, yeah. well I can fetch a few quid for this yeah. Richie enters and then the disappointment in Eddie's voice oh, Richie you're alive well, is, is <laughs> yeah. it disappointment or relief it's a bit of both probably yeah, yeah. yeah I do um, and don't actually overplay the sound effects do they what, what, what? very subtle sound they, effects they're more subtle yeah. than they would have yeah. been and the same yeah. with obviously where Absolutely. he's like sticking the screwdriver or whatever it yeah. is into yeah. the electric that yeah. bit's, that's on. more realistic than it normally is isn't it it would be the noise mm. yeah. in later yeah. episodes but yeah. it, it looks more painful and there's sparks flying everywhere yeah. and the yeah. actual kicking in of the telly and the smoke that comes out yeah. of it like, yeah. that's very real that's mm-hmm. still like hanging around in the set like long after like, <laughs> yeah. the, the sound that they've been done sure. and have you noticed the sparks that fly when Rick actually has to kind of leap towards camera and yes. it's like yeah, yeah. that yeah. looks like a very real explosion of some yeah. sort yeah health and safety nightmare again yeah I wonder if they would let them do that sort of thing well, it mean, does look as if they just let like a I don't know like a firework I, I'm yeah. not in any way technical on the on the pyrotechnic side it's a, it's a small pyrotechnic spark or something mm. it, it's nothing compared to some of the other things they've done in other episodes yeah. Yeah. You sure. know, it's very explosive. convincing the pilot yeah definitely yeah there's a, there's a line I think Richie says it like oh we were on the brink of winning this much like no what first of all <laughs> the bet's not real but also <laughs> the, on the brink of winning that that's sums up how a lot of gamblers are now they feel so, oh I'm so close to yeah. winning but that fucking horse yeah. came in last well, instead you, you oh genuinely believe fuck me. that they yeah. were in with a chance and that's the thing like it's not real Richie doesn't know at that point no yeah. Eddie knew and he still smashes the telly in yeah. um, and the idea of all the hopes are built up and again that's the classic sitcom half hour isn't it like sure. some yeah. kind of hope that happens and then all of the dreams are smashed by the end of it but and they've still got each other they do mention oh I think I've reached my bottom mm. now it's I, that really really sums up this is the pilot I suppose yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. summing up why it's called bottom and I think right after that he says something, oh we're on the brink of winning 10,000 grands yeah. do you notice that which yeah. is 10 yeah. million. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that just kind of shows how Richie doesn't really know what yeah. money is. Yeah. Well, so like, 10,000 grand. Um, and then that leads us to a classic bottom ending, which is one of them inflicting violence on the other. Mm. Yeah. So that was there from the start. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. From the very it's beginning of the it? yeah, It's quite a similar. I think it's probably one of the tamest. I suppose it's very similar to the first episode, where it's just a punch in the face to Eddie. Yeah. The first season, the end injuries are always quite minor really it's usually a punch isn't it yeah or punch yeah. kicking the bollocks or I think or he snaps his legs at the last oh, yeah. one that's quite yeah. horrible well, I, th- I think Eddie's not had any violence against him the whole episode no he fact. doesn't no. so that's the only, the only punch he received because yeah. uh, Eddie hit, clocks Richie one when the, in the dark. Yeah. Uh, Richie falls out the window, and I think that's it. It's, yeah, very little violence in this episode. Also, Richie always plays it as very fearful of Eddie. So when Eddie's getting angry at him, that's what Richie yeah, goes that's over quite, and is nervous. Quite dark. So you get the impression <laughs> that the domestic violence yeah. element of it. Yeah. 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 You yeah. kind of get the impression the violence is one way until the very end when he, when he turns on Eddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you yeah. can only take so much, I suppose, isn't it? The yeah. frustration of Richie. Sure. He knows how far he can push him a lot yeah. of the time. Well, how fucking irresponsible that. They've got no money at all, and with it, how much he scrambled for five p's and twenty p's in later later episodes. Eddie's like, "Well, I've got a tenner left. Let me blow it yeah, all yeah. straight away. I'm, I'm going to spend ninety yeah. percent of of all the money we have left on some food, yeah. and then the remainder on a magazine, <laughs> yeah. and then leave virtually fucking nothing. Yeah, thirty p. Well, yeah. that's what's brilliant, isn't it? It's like this is an investment. I'm going to show this to my grandkids. Like, <laughs> yeah. The idea that he's come out of the dole office depressed, yeah. and where's he gone first? Like somewhere <laughs> that's going to sell him a, a vintage. Yeah. yeah. Well, Where's he gone? To sum up Eddie's character, it's lack of impulse control. I think he just he's a slave to his his whims of of yeah, yeah. Uh, drink, violence, and, and birds. Yeah, Suppose he does have really a bit of his success. Lund's not having a bird, does he? No, he he's, that he's got nasty Linda. Yeah, yeah he's got yeah. he's got yeah, yeah, some yeah. form of a little got, black book, hasn't he? He's a man of action. He never has monologues. Somewhere that, he has Ethel Cardew tucked away. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so anything you guys would have changed in the episode or any quibbles with it or anything? Yeah, I'd have shaved Eddie's head 
It made it <laughs> bored. <laughs> I, I would have made them travel forward in time two years to film yeah, it then. Absolutely. No, I've always quite liked the charm of contest and how it looks that little bit different. Because mm. it, it was something that always puzzled me. Because I noticed when it was on the video, I was kind of yeah. like, they're a bit different in this one. It's the third one, so it's not the first. And then yeah. once the internet comes in, you're like, oh, right, okay. Yeah, sure. Early, you know. For me, the only thing that I would slightly query or quibble... And this is me being a film wanker, spotting these kind of things. Do you see the sound boom reflect? Oh, the, the shadow oh, at oh. One point? actually, in that case, there's two. Whenever Richie passes through the middle of like the table area, mm. it, it looks like he's got a boom shadow over his face. Oh, does it? But that's, um, yeah, once or twice I did spot that. Is, yeah. But no, the main thing for me, actually, and this is so fucking minor, is that when all the electricity in the flat goes off and they open the fridge, the light in the fridge is on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all, all in the drawer. That's the fridge. Yeah. 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 But that's Making a great gag, <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, that's because that's sure. the fridge. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I never actually thought about that. Hmm. The episode is for me as near as perfect as it could be, and it plays well as a third episode, and it, and it plays well as a first episode. Yeah, sure, yeah, it's a I good one see, to introduce people to. You can see why they didn't want to open on suicide, perhaps, and the <laughs> maybe they just thought they retroactively like, well, we got things a bit tight, and now we want the first episode mm. to be really tight, and that's good, but yeah, maybe it's not the best one to start with. So I, I can kind of understand it, but yeah, it's it's still very very strong. The sound effects that I could note were the turnip crunch when yep. Richie bites mm. down on it, the electricity when Richie is forming the breaker, yeah, yeah. Okay. and the fall from the window. There's a bit of a you know noise there. Apart yeah. from that, I'm not really sure what well, else. There's the oi when he's oh, yeah. right, yeah, but... sort of sound effect. So it's not a two-hander, is it? You've got that bloke. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Oi, man. It is my favourite episode of the first series, I think. Yeah. I love gas so, so much. But I think that this just... This one's your strongest. Just tips into the best, just for the script alone. Okay. And the yeah. arguments between them. I much prefer the you know one-to-one childish yeah. banter that happens between Richie and Eddie in contest, I think. I love that this is one that any Bottom fans, if they ever wanted to put on a little production of Bottom, this is one you just take the script for it and it just requires two people, one set, that's yeah, all. Yeah, absolutely. The one I would act out with my friend would be this one, or Culture. It's yeah, a, a yeah. very similar with yeah, another two-hander one. That's very interesting. Did you used to do that with yeah, your with, mates when you were yeah, kids? Because yeah, yeah. I used to do it with a friend from primary yeah, school yeah. as well with the scripts book. Yeah. And we actually went one further and invented a next generation, and we did. we were Richie and Eddie's daughters. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you just have? One did you summer, feel just, not like, few... represented enough? Like, let's just change it. Yeah, well, we wanted girls in it. Obviously, yeah. there weren't many girls to impersonate. So yeah, sure, I think yeah. one one of us was called Kim after Kim Basinger. All right. And the other one, Sue? I think, was Sue from yeah. Sue Carpenter. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It was like we were Kim and Sue, and we so just Eddie's... did a ridiculous. I don't even know. So what Richie the hell we said. has lost his virginity then. Yeah. We, 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 we had all the hope that they would one day <laughs> meet some birds and we would be their daughters. Yeah. And what are they in it? They weren't. No, no, we were just so it's messing just, around so one day. Like we were like, we were about 11. In this play acting, <laughs> what was the character of your mum like? Was it your actual mum or was I it... I don't think we went into it. Okay. No, no. It's no. just an excuse for you to be Richie and Eddie, but girl Yeah, versions. and we yeah, were yeah. young, so we were 11, so how yeah. else could we be their daughters? I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't that we were their girlfriends. Like, yeah, it was no, no, literally... No, 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 yeah, because yeah, sure, sure. you saw Rick and Ada's father figures, I think. Yeah, okay. Weird, analysing my own childhood. There you go. Okay, so I think maybe time for a quiz. This week, it's going to be Paul asking the questions and me and Angela answering them. I've got a feeling Angela's going to win from the few comments well, made throughout got the thing. one point, right? No. Nope. Seeing, <laughs> seeing as she caned me last week, so do you guys both want to select your buzzer noises? I assume we'll be going for a fart each. All right. <laughs> That's a good one. Quick that, fart. That is quite a good one. This is my one? Okay. okay, so it's going to be ten questions. Okay, question one. When Eddie comes in... What newspaper does, does he sit down to read? Okay, I paused this and I analysed it. <laughs> and I think it says something along the lines of The Cycling Life. I'm sorry, that's not the right answer. Uh, Matt, I'm going to throw this over to you. Oh, I have no idea. What was it? Okay, the correct answer is The Sporting Life. Is the it sport? sporting yeah. that that yeah. says? That's what I wanted to say, but it didn't look like the words S-P-O-R-T. No, no, it looks like it begins with a C. It's definitely sporting. Okay. Oh, well, there we are. Half point mm. on that. No, of course not. Yeah. All right. Okay, so what? Why did you get half point? Because it had words in it. It's the same as your. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Question two. What is the headline on the front of the newspaper? <laughs> Ceylon at the Ceylon at the chemists. <laughs> That's a complete guess that I know won't be true. Angela. I don't fucking refer to I notes. Look back through my notes because I think I wrote it down, but now I don't know it. So. Okay. The headline says. 
Ashal's A Golden Wonder. Yeah, I did write down that. that <laughs> okay. It's gone. Never okay. mind. Okay, all right, question three. Ashal was, of course, the horse most famous for winning the Ascot. These are not about Bottom. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, yeah, all right, carry on. You don't want the question? All right, no, carry on. on. Ashal was, of course, most famous for winning the Ascot Gold Cup. But what year? Okay, so 1989. Oh, who, who rung in first? It was definitely oh. Matt that rung in first. Okay, 1989, you're going with 1989. Yeah. I can tell you that's incorrect. Angela, I'm going to throw it over to you. Okay, I'll have a guess, seeing as it was filmed in 1989, then it must have been 1988. I'm sorry, the correct answer is 1990. What the fuck? Oh, fuck off, how did they know that? Well, well... Uh, they just said you're always a good oh, racehorse. Are, are you the... actually asking trivia about something nothing to do with the episode contest? It well, seems I'm, so. I, I'm asking trivia about Ashel, who was the horse mentioned on right. the front of I'm, the Sporting Life. I'm sorry, oh. but this is not about Boston. <laughs> and I wish there was some kind of adjudicator. Yeah. Listen, you, you guys <laughs> you guys decimated most of my questions through the course of, the, of this week's podcast. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, well, that's what happened. So right. is that is that well, so that was the third question? Well, it's still nil nil. That was the third question on which no one got the right answer. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Next question. What three people did Eddie encounter in the job centre? Two of them have names, and one of them just has a job position. In the doll. In the uh, doll. Yeah, office. I know what you mean. I, I Mrs. Higglebottom and stuff like that. I'll, I don't I'll know. I'll buzz in. Right. Okay. Let me go through this in my head. All right. <laughs> so he spent all day in the doll office. Can I look at the script? No, you can't. <laughs> I mean, there's that bitch, Mrs. Pugh. That's one of them, Mrs. Pugh. And then... That's the second person he encounters. I spent an hour with... I actually, I don't know, Mrs. Pugh. That's all I can tell okay. you. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll give you the point if you can name... All right, you can't name the other person. What about the position of the person that he then saw after Mrs. Pugh? Supervisor's office? Correct, it was the supervisor. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'll right. give you the point. You the point. first person was Mrs. Longbottom. Oh. Longbottom. Longbottom. So that's one I think point I, I think I did make a note of Mrs. Yeah. Longbottom, actually. Now that you say it, but... It's but yeah, that's, yeah. Really again with the whole the thing. Answer. So do I get a half for that? No, you get a point. I'll, I'll give you a full point for get that really? point. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Generous. Yeah. Come on, then. Okay. How long did the supervisor say £11.80 to keep Eddie going for? Matt, I think that's you. Three months? That's incorrect. Uh. <laughs> and I think two? Two months is the right answer. Oh, no. That's two to Angela. <laughs> According to Richie, who should be on Miss China's mouth and what should they be doing? What? That's Angela. Right, so there should be a traffic warden on it. Stop, like stopping, stopping the traffic. traffic? I'll, I'll, not, they, they should be stopping the traffic, not a traffic warden. Oh, a lollipop man, lollipop lady. I'm going to give you half a point each because they were stopping the traffic, but it's lollipop man. Okay. I hope these aren't too hard. <laughs> oh, the fucking horse one. The fucking car crash. <laughs> okay, all right. What is the final line or the final words of the entire episode? Yum yum. Correct, it's yum yum. Oh, Eddie, right. Eddie says yum yum. <laughs> How much do the fake kidnappers want in ransom? 11 million billion squillion pounds. I'm sorry, oh, oh, you've, you've, got, you've got two vital components there wrong. And I'm going to throw it over to you. It's 14 million billion squillion zillion dollars. Correct on all oh, counts. And my I was goodness. not reading that. No, no, yep. well done. <laughs> Hard to say quite quickly. Yeah. Well done, Rick, for remembering those. Okay. Well, he wrote it. On the wall behind the dining table, this is... Uh, <laughs> okay. What is this? Is this right. the horse again? No, no. On the wall behind the dining table are some shelves. A box for what device is on top of the shelves? Oh. Um, it's a uh, sandwich toaster. Is that right? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I think it's something to do with sewing. You are right. It is to do with... It is to do with actually say what it is exactly something to do with sewing i'm gonna give you half a oh, point fuck off <laughs> something to do with sewing i'm gonna give you half a point it's a weaving loom well what? there you go yeah, yeah. Yep. so i remember seeing the words okay. I'm, I'm gonna give you half a point there to... it's not a no, i'm not happy about that one. Toaster, is it no okay that, so that's not we're nine questions in so we've got one last question yeah i don't think i can win how much does eddie owe in rent I think it Matt beat you to it. 11,645 uh, pounds and 66 pence. New pence. New pence. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll, I, I will give you that, Matt. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. And that reaches the end of the quiz. That's 10 I think questions. I'm half a point missing. Yeah, what points? At the end of that, Angela has four points, comprised of three full points and two halves. Matt has two and a half points. Oh, so fuck. Angela Wonderful. is the winner this week. Yay. Well done. Ooh. Well done. What was your bonus question if we needed it? All right, so my other questions... For fun. My other questions were... I had several other ones. Okay. Uh, when was Eddie's last steady job? That was uh, 1978. 1978. Yep. 
Uh, fast food sign opposite. What does it say? Tandoori. Tandoori at a glow. Um, who is Eddie's alternative for the night if he Nasty leaves? Nasty Linda. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there are no happy. losers in this game. There are no losers. It's, only all three of us. It's just like, exactly like that's that the fact that we know all of this shit is um, not something to be proud of, yeah. but somehow we are. <laughs> so that's it. If anyone has any suggestions for questions for the quiz for upcoming episodes, bearing in mind you know the order we'll be doing them in, uh, then please feel free to send us any suggestions or ideas. Eleven Mafeking Parade at gmail dot com. We'll that's include the eleven, uh, the number. And we'll put a link to yeah, it. Yeah. Right, how the fuck would that work? Send us in the questions for us to ask each other. We'd, what? Then we'd look up the quiz. That would be really weird. Well, because <laughs> well, because whoever is doing the quiz that week could use that question. Well, I tell I you suppose- what, what if it's actually that people send in like, tri- unknown trivia or something, you know? Yeah, is there anything right. you've spotted that you think we haven't mentioned as send well? Send in anything. Send in anything other than abuse. We've only been receiving abuse so far, so something nice. Send Quite us right in. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, any obscure trivia perhaps that we haven't touched upon about the first three episodes? If you think, oh, they didn't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then... Just because we passed the episode doesn't yeah. mean we can't. Uh... Any we'll facts we might have missed. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. I think that we should know because we're doing them all in chronological order. Because, you know, I thought I knew a lot about Bottom, but doing this has made me realise there was still a lot more to uh, find out about sure. it. There's a lot and to it's find out. Watching it with an academic eye is really fun. Academic, well, is that what we are now? Well, we're not, well, yes. well making we're notes, get a degree in annotating, it, of annotating it while watching it, and it's, it still doesn't feel like work. It's still funny. It's brilliant. Yeah. Does anyone watch, watch it with a new perspective? Someone, someone must have done Bottom for a mastermind subject at some point. If they haven't, I know I would. And uh, next week, we will be talking about Apocalypse. I'm looking forward to it, guys. Awesome. Get swatting. I'm in charge of the questions next week. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Next week, Apocalypse.